Oh my gosh, friends. Do you see the wicked, horrifying, terrifying lines on this Kershaw launch? It literally reminds me of like the finger on a xenomorph. You know, one of those aliens that just bursts. <laughs> out of your chest. I mean, it looks like Sigourney Weaver's EDC blade. I mean, just look at that. It looks straight out of a sci-fi film. And even that blade shape with so many different angles on it. Oh my gosh, I'm so pumped to show you what this blade has going on, pros, cons. And I gotta give a quick shout out to GP Knives, one of our affiliates that sent this over to me. When I saw that it was dropping, I reached out to him. I was like, guys, you have got to get this over into my hands. And not, not only for myself, but for you, the viewers, to see what this has going on. And they were happy to oblige. So if you guys are interested, not only in this blade, but just in blade purchases and gear purchases in general, we have those GP links for you below over the GP Knives check them out I've ordered through them so many different times even before they were affiliate and they rock their service is awesome and their prices are great so check them out and so with that let's go ahead break down this terrifying EDC auto from Kershaw USA made and see if EDCing a xenomorph claw is the right tool in your sci-fi adventures well, this has just as much craziness going on in the front as it does at the back with the handle. So let's go ahead and talk about this blade briefly, just performance, cool factor, but also like where are you really going to deploy this blade? Okay, so the first thing right out of the gate, USA made again, very good with CPM 154 steel. That is different than 154 CM. It's an upgrade over that steel. It's still um, stain resistant, so it's a stainless steel. So that's good for those of you in high humid environments, particularly when it doesn't have a lot of coating on it and stuff. Um, and it will hold its edge better than your 154 CMs, VG10, um, like N690 and 95. It's gonna be an upgrade over that, competing more with steels like S30V. So very happy with that steel, glad they went with it. They've been using it on the entire launch line, which I'm very happy about. And I've used those for a couple years now, basically since launch, <laughs> launch of the launch line the the this tool has been used by me and this type of steel and I, I really am happy with the wear resistance easiness to resharpen compared to other like m390 or you know 20 cv steels out there that's gonna they're a bear they're gonna take a long time this is a little bit easier but still holding a very good edge you're gonna get a saber grind on that completely flat razor blade style warren cliff you know design so there's no belly whatsoever it makes it very easy to resharpen it makes it very precise and with that eighth of an inch thickness all the way through, basically until it transitions to the tip, you're getting a good robust blade, but it's not overly stout and thick and then kind of like burly and doesn't slice super well. So it's a very, very wicked slicer, even though it does have that, you know, kind of high saber grind. Um, it can compete with a lot of FFGs out there just because of the way that they've designed the blade. And then that very aggressive drop um, and making for that very precise precision tip there works very, very well. So it's a great piercer, like packaging, you know, if you needed to p pick out a um, splinter, you know, something like that, the piercing capability of this is very good. Obviously that tip is pretty thin and precise. So that's, you know, it's not a prying tool by any means. And then you got those sweet angles and transitions on the blade overall. So what I would say is this is going to excel for about 90% of us knife users who carry our blades for general EDC everyday tasks. That means a package comes in and is delivered, you know, and so we're opening a new flashlight that just showed up or our next knife that we just ordered, um, our Amazon packages, um, you know, our GP knife that just arrived, you know, that we ordered or whatever it is. Um, it's gonna do great with that. Um, very precise, good food prep tool. If you need to do that, you like using your pocket knife to do food prep and that type of stuff, we'll work great with that. Cardboard, you have to break down a bunch of boxes at the office. It's gonna really excel at those type of environments and those type of tasks. Where I would say there's a little bit of a drawback is more either as a first responder, I think there are other launch tools that we're gonna look at, launch knives, that would just be better suited, I think. And even in self-defense role, though it will slice and pierce super well, I would just say that there are better lateral, kind of thicker, beefier knives that I would use either as a first responder kind of environment 
or if I'm going to go do a bunch of work in the backyard, you know, doing a bunch of heavy utility tasks, I think that there would be other launch knives that we're going to about to look at that might be a little bit better suited for that. But for the majority of us knife lovers, it is going to really be fun to use with that general EDC utility tasks around the home, around the office that we use the majority of the time our knives for. Okay, how about this insane handle? I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. How does it work? Is it too narrow to, you know, like what is, what's going on? Are there just too many crazy angles, that type of stuff? I wanna answer those questions for you right here, right now. And so the first thing that I wanna hit is weight. This knife comes in at 2.4 ounces. So it is ultra lightweight for a three and a half inch auto. Love that, cannot complain at all about the weight. That is awesome. Fully machined aluminum handle, just like all the other launch knives. Uh, so that's super good there. And then the overall length is gonna be four and a half inches long. So it's got a lot of real estate to work with, but the really cool thing is a 0.47, almost a half an inch thick. And that's really where it's kind of it's saving grace on the ergonomics. You can see there all the little cut-ins, again, help with that lightness of the blade very cool in all those different angles but all the angles are machined and milled super well there's not a single hot spot in the sense of pressure or sharp angle on this knife so i think they did a really cool really good job with that super awesome with that flow through there very very cool you got a, a lanyard post back there in the back which is really nice as well so that is all super good and even the aesthetics are just awesome very alien-esque and that th um, triangular rounded pivot is just so sick looking I mean, just look at that thing it's so dope as you guys all know large size hands here when you grab the tool it fits really nicely so I have a deep kind of guard natural right here like that um, you could choke up, I wouldn't. It, they actually kept that dulled right there, so it is actually comfortable in that way, but it, it just, I wouldn't do it. Um, that's how you hold it right there. The fullness of that flared pocket clip in the back even fills out that kind of back space really nicely there. So you can see plenty of real estate, so that's all good. Nice jimp right there, that's perfect jimping. If a knife is gonna have jimping, that's the way to do it. Just a little bit of hits right there, not to give it only a good aesthetic, but a little bit of good grip, so on a push, you know, thumb, hammer grip, cut, gonna work really, really well. Uh, and right here, the middle finger is what I was basically concerned about, and probably you guys too, like, is that so narrow? But the way my hand is designed, the way they kind of kicked out the bottom portion, you don't realize that they're in your hand. And I have my buddy Brian even hold it, um, who has extra large size hands. And he, I was like, dude, is that too small? He's like, no, man, I can definitely get my hand around that. It doesn't feel like I'm holding a pencil. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say it's super full and fat and thick. You know, it's it's a narrower cut in. So if that's something you're concerned about, obviously be aware. But for me, it fit fine. And my index finger isn't like gaping and like floating. I'm able to get a grip there. And it feels very just organic. And then even in a reverse grip, same thing. Boom. We throw that in there. Got even a nice little shelf for my thumb. So maybe some of you who know how to use a karambit really well, you know, maybe this is exactly what you're looking for. Maybe you can use it more as a self-defense tool. So I wouldn't be intimidated by the handle ergonomics on this tool. For me with large size hands and anyone smaller for sure, fits totally good and doesn't feel like I'm just gripping onto a pencil and I don't have any leverage. So obviously we got a tip up, loop over, deep ride pocket clip. You do not have recessed screws. I would like to see that. Um, it still is uh, good enough that most pockets even reinforce double loop like 511 or vertex style pants you'll be able to get them over most of those reinforced pocket loops uh, and it rides very deep in the pocket so that's good blacked out a little bit of a flare doesn't cause any hot spots for me when i grip it and actually kind of fills out your hand even more on the back end which is nice and then it is ambidextrous right or left so lefties you could swap that over no problema all right so it's an auto i like how they have it completely blacked out no safety totally dig that never have had an auto accidentally deploy in my pocket once in my entire life and now i've carried i don't know a dozen of them for a couple years now and uh, no issues so the launch series snaps that sucker out not super so fast that like you have to release the button you know like oh so i've had a couple you know where you like if you don't get your butt finger off that button fast enough it'll actually not engage and you know disengage and kind of sit slightly disengaged so the uh, but good speed and i've owned several again launches over several years and never had a slowing down of the spring any issues with that really engages easily i can open and close as you can see one-handed and then we have that post or pillar 
lock up. Let's see if we can get that on frame here. There we go. Really good. So you just press that, moves out of the way. We got a really nice stop bar. Look at how big that stop bar is. That's a good, like, psh, locks into place. Yeah, good solid up and down. Really no rock, maybe ever so slight. Okay, so I mean, it's tight. For an auto, it's super tight, no issue there. Good lock up, zero complaints, and good snappy action. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit price point and we'll look at some competitive options here real quick. So this guy is going to run over on GP Knives for 115 bucks, which is one of the lower prices you're going to find this tool for. So that's super awesome. That's something that I've always appreciated about GP Knives is that they often get blades before a lot of other, you know, online retailers do, and they often have some of the best pricing. So super awesome. And again, they sent this over to us. So huge shout out to them. So I could, you know, make this video so you guys can kind of hear pros, cons, you know, value, performance, so you can make that choice if this is the right tool for you or maybe some of these other ones I'm about to roll in here for you. With that, um, I will run in here the Kershaw Launch 1. Love this blade, so cool. Had to get a little readjustment there. But you can see how much wider, bigger, fuller, you know, obviously that handle is. So if that's something, you know, you're like, I love everything about it, the handle seems kind of narrow, and you just want to go with a fuller auto, then this is obviously a great option. It's much wider. I think this one's so cool and has such a wicked performance and it will out slice the launch one. This launch um, 13 is going to out slice it and just love the, the look factor. This guy's going to go, uh, what I saw at GP Nines was like 87 bucks, um, you know, for all the same steel, um, same mechanism, great deploying features, ambidextrous, all of that. The um, one would obviously be way more like simple, practical, you know, in that sense. But the 13 just has such a crazy cool, you know, z xenomorph aspect to it. Well, there we go, folks. Thanks for hanging with me, talking shop, talking blades, seeing pros and cons of the design and whether or not something, you know, that really connects with you. You know, all kidding aside, I mean, it is a horrifying, <laughs> terrifying tool. And every single person in my friends and family, you know, I have several buddies. I have my brother. Um, you know, I see them regularly. They're always like wanting to check out what, you know, what's come in recently. What are you working on? And every single one of them that whips this thing open is like, dude, this is so cool. This is one of the cooler autos they've seen in a long time. And I agree. So I do hope though, that the video has also just shown you the data, you know, to give you, you know, really good food for thought. Is this the right tool, um, you know, to carry? Is it something that's really going to connect with you? Is it better just to go with a more, you know, I don't know, fr family friendly looking, <laughs> auto um, from Kershaw or other brands out there. That's what I hope to do in this video is just give you guys the info, the data that you need so that you can make a wise choice on your tools and whether or not the launch 13 is the terrifyingly wicked tool you should throw on your pocket the next time you're about to jump in on airlock. So with that, guys, thanks so much for coming over today and checking out the channel. Check out the other video popping up. Uh, we invite you to subscribe as well, become part of the GT family here. You can check us out on Instagram, doing tons of cool kind of behind the scenes stuff over there, giveaways sometimes, stuff like that. Facebook as well, where you can see up and coming projects. I'm working on things like that. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.